want to deal with it. Um, I can't I can't verify the validity of that, but um, you know I, I'm not sure anyone is going to attend today. Okay. Well, we'll give it a couple minutes. We'll go on the record. We'll admit the exhibits. I, I do have a couple questions for you about it, just for the record, and then we'll proceed accordingly. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. I have turned off the recording. Ms. Slaughter, are you with the county? Uh, Howard, she is. Um, she might not be able to hear you. Uh, Ms. Slaughter is uh, an admin for community development. Gotcha. Okay. She is also right, well, my backup if I'm not available. Oh, okay. Great, great. Well, it is 8 a.m. Mr. Stentor, are you prepared to proceed? I am, sir. Okay, why don't we go ahead and call the case? We are on the record, Ms. Hernandez? Yes, we are recording. Okay. Good morning. Today is July 24, 2024. The time is 8 a.m. This is the zoning violation hearing on zoning violation citation PZC 24. Dash 0012 County of Coconino versus Bruno Gurgel Jr. Taking place by video conference and at Thomas Auditorium, Department of Community Development. The hearing is held pursuant to Coconino County Zoning Ordinance 5.14. I am in receipt of the county's exhibits one through six with subparts. I'm not in receipt of a witness list, so therefore I assume that only the zoning in, uh, inspector Mark Stento will be testifying for the county. I'm not in receipt of any exhibits or witness lists for the respondent. Uh, the respondent has not appeared at the appointed time. Uh, Mr. Stento, is that correct? The respondent is not in the hallway or anywhere else in the hearing room? Um, that is correct. We are quickly performing one final check. Uh, the respondent is not here. So. Okay. Mr. Stento, I'm going to put you under oath, um, and uh, you can tell me a little bit about service of process, including regarding the citation and the notice to uh, appear and the admission of denial, admission or denial of responsibility form. So if you would please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony today? I do. Okay, thank you, Mr. Stento. Um, yeah, why don't you tell me, uh, and I do have the exhibits, um, and actually as a preliminary matter, I'll go ahead and admit into evidence exhibits one through six with all subparts. Mr. Stento, why don't you tell me about your attempts at service of process, including uh, what was left with who at the property and whether you uh, did that or with or whether someone else at the property did it? Certainly. Uh, the initial notice of violation uh, was sent via certified mail to Mr. Gurgle in Silver Lake, Wisconsin um, on 26 March. Um, we also posted on the property at that time. Um, the initial notice... Uh, was not returned to the county. Uh, tracking did show it delivered. The individual picked it up at the post office. 
Um, I later, when talking with the tenant on the property, uh, the tenant confirmed he had verbally to me he had been in contact with Mr. Gurgle, and Mr. Gurgle was aware of the initial notice. Uh, this conversation I'm referring to occurred upon service um, of the final notice uh, to that individual. Um, so we did not receive a signed certified mail receipt, however, from the initial notice violation. That's not uncommon uh, with the Postal Service for us. Um, sometimes those things get lost, especially lately. Uh, the, do you have any questions about that before I move on to service? For the uh, final not, notice? Not, not so far. Go right ahead. Okay, perfect. Uh, the final notice we also sent via certified mail to Mr. Gurgle. That one, uh, he did not pick up. Um, but we did serve that. I did personally serve that pursuant to the affidavit included uh, with exhibit uh, two. Uh, I did personally serve that on the tenant later identified as Corey. Uh, and that is when that I had that conversation with him about notification of Mr. Gurgle. He said he was aware of it. Uh, the tenant himself, Corey, was aware of it. We had initiated a conversation with Corey about this in a year prior. Um, so the principal service of the final notice was on Corey the tenant. Uh, moving on to the citation, uh, we sent that again via certified mail to Mr. Gurgle. Uh, that he did sign for on 10 June 2024. Um, and we also served that on Corey uh, on the property on 06 June 2024. I completed that service myself. Um, I again had a conversation on the record. Uh, I believe I recorded that uh, with uh, Corey, where he stated again that uh, Mr. Gerber was aware of the issue and um, uh, uh, had received the prior notice. Okay, gotcha. Let me just kind of scroll through here. Certainly. So the original notice of violation, which was dated March 19, that's your exhibit one, was sent by certified mail to Silver Lake, Wisconsin. The postal service document shows it was picked up at the post office in Silver Lake on 326. Did you say Correct. you also did you say you also posted that on the property? Yes, sir. We did post that on the property. And that is actually visible in Exhibit 1C. Okay, let me take a look. We posted both a, um, uh, so oh. we have a, yeah, we kind of have a ticket format you can see in the red card. We also had a complete notice of violation posted underneath that. Um, that contained everything seen uh, in this some actually in Exhibit 1. Uh, that posting was later removed from the property and is not seen uh, in subsequent business. I'm sorry, so tell me in, in 1C, the, um, the red is the notice of violation? Uh, the red is, so we have, uh, we have a, it's like a tape format, it's like a, like we can write it in the field. It's a notice oh. violation um, where we can write the violation uh, and uh, a brief synopsis of the corrective measures. Underneath that, uh, we actually took a copy of the notice of violation itself uh, in an envelope that we brought out there to serve on to uh, Corey. And um, uh, we posted it there since he was not on the site at the time. Okay, gotcha. Okay. And then the final notice of violation, which is dated 430. Um, personal service by you, Mr. Stento, on the tenant, Corey. Is Corey a last name or first name? Corey is a first name. We were not provided with a last name. Okay. It's the same. 
It was the same individual on the property uh, for the last year. He's the um, uh, sole individual we've, we've documented out there. However, we've been unable to confirm with Mr. Gurgle, since we've not been able to contact Mr. Gurgle directly, that Corey is indeed a lawful tenant on the property. Um, but uh, uh, the totality of the circumstance it seems to indicate some sort of arrangement um, that allows him to lawfully use the property. Okay. And that personal service was on April 30th, 2024? Uh, that's correct. It's uh, 951 hours. Okay. And and that was also sent by certified mail to Silver Lake, Wisconsin? That is correct. Okay. We don't have a green card or anything like that for that, but we do have... Um, on the bottom of page two of two, the certified mail number. Uh, correct. Uh, and that was not picked up. So we believe after receiving the initial notice, he ignored that notice. Uh, okay. He did, he did sign for the citation and notice to appear. And that is likely because of the conversation we had um, uh, with Corey. Corey alleged he was in touch with Mr. Durbel during service of the final notice, as I noted before, um, we presume then that they talked and um, for one reason or another, Mr. Gurgel decided to sign for the citation of notice to appear. Okay, gotcha. All right, good. And um, we have not received, or you did not receive the form notice of, uh, or rather admission or denial. That is correct. We did not receive a completed admission or denial from Mr. Burrell or from the alleged tenant, Corey. Okay. Okay. So is there a, an abode or residence on this property? Um, there was a, a mobile home at one point on the property. Um, that mobile home, based on our assessment when we were visiting, does not appear to be occupied or occupiable. Uh, I can't verify that because I haven't been in it. So the short version is there was, its habitability is questionable now. Mm. Okay. When you say there was, like, like, did you see it during one of your site visits and then it was gone? No, uh, I'm referring to uh, satellite imagery. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking uh, at that. I'm looking at that picture one e. Yeah. Yeah, and I know that resolution isn't the greatest on that. Um, there's a mix of structures on the property. Uh, there are no dwelling permits for the property. To be clear. So there is no SFD permit for the property. That's not uncommon in Coconino County, especially when we're dealing with old mobile homes. So, you know, pre-1970s potentially. Um, that's what I believe was on the property in the Northwest quadrant. Um, the remaining structures that you can actually see in the satellite image in 1E uh, are structures that were either erected or dragged onto the property um, mm. on the awful way. Um, and have remained there. Shed type structures would be the simplest way to put it, but they don't like to meet the 200 square foot criteria uh, to actually be qualified as a shed, so they take a building permit in Tokyo County. I um, see. We were, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's that? You used a. Um, you said there's no SFD permit. What's SFD? A single family dwelling permit. Uh, uh, a house okay. permit for a house. Gotcha. So when you. And when you went out there for your site visits, you didn't see the what you we think is a what you think is a mobile home from that satellite imagery. That's correct. Um, that imagery going back, uh, and the the uh, the assessor's office appeared to show at least at one point there was a mobile home on the property. It might have been dragged off, um, but. Uh, the structures that were visible on the property can be seen in Exhibit 1B. So in Exhibit 1B, you can see two sheds at the rear of the property. Um, those 
One of them appears to have been inhabited at some point, but uh, we didn't see any signs of recent habitation. They're, they're not associated with uh, uh, any known permits. Uh, and the mobile home I'm talking about uh, that was in historic imagery would be uh, behind the white band in Exhibit 1B based on its location on the property, but I didn't observe it while I was there. Okay. So where did you meet Corey? Corey was milling about the property uh, every time I visited. Um, our our subject, subjective impression from years of enforcement activity in the county is that there was a sort of scrapping operation being run out of this property. Corey was participating in activities consistent with that when I would visit, tearing things apart. Uh, we saw traffic coming to and from the property, indicating purchase or sales of um, uh, stuff we could not identify. Um, so on uh, the initial site vision before the notice period began, so 2023, when we basically issued a warning and the property was beginning to uh, go downhill, so to speak, um, I walked onto the property uh, uh, via the driveway that's seen in Exhibit 1C. Once I passed the white SUV or the white truck rather that is visible in the center right of the image, I was approached by three adult males, one of which was Corey, uh, that came out of an RV that was on the property that is no longer on there now. Uh, another one came out of one of the sheds, and another one came out from behind some of the materials that are pictured in Exhibit 1A. Uh, so we see basically refuse and vehicle parts there, um, an individual ambled out of that area. Uh, mm -hmm. So Corey was on the property. Um, he wasn't in any sort of dwelling of any sort when I went up there. Um, do you have any follow up questions to that? How, how old did Corey seem to you? Uh, Corey was probably in his early 30s. You were able to have a coherent conversation with him? Uh, yes, I was. Uh, and like I said, when I, um, I served, I believe it was the citation on him, I was wearing a body camera. I have not pulled that in it, or that video and submitted it for evidence, nor have I reviewed it at the time. Uh, but should, uh, should you want further verification of that, those contacts, I'd be happy to pull up my camera and see if I can pull that. You 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 were out there three times. Is that, am I, is that right? That's correct. Okay. And give me an give me an idea of what makes you think that he's staying out there. Uh, his continued presence on the property when we when we made the initial contact for the notice of violation, there was an RV on the property. Uh, that we hadn't been aware of prior to that contact. It is, I'm trying to see if it's pictured here. I don't have it pictured in the exhibits. It wasn't necessarily relevant to our case in the sense that we were pursuing a violation against the RV. We had already initiated action pursuant to the initial notice at that point. Um, but there was an RV that, that someone was staying in intermittently on the property. Mm. Um, it's entirely plausible that someone is occupying the shed shown in 1B intermittently. Um, like I said, it's not an established dwelling. Uh, we haven't seen indications of permanent residency, um, but uh, it's not uncommon for transient occupancy of sheds like that to occur in situations like this in Coquino County. And how many acres is this parcel? Uh, this parcel is two and a half, or approximately two and a half acres. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to verify that real quick. So they'd get 400 square feet of fence screen storage. storage. Screen Ooh. storage. Okay. Right. At the rear of the primary dwelling. Um, yeah. Uh, you anticipated my next question. Yeah, you know, we would 
if if the um, respondents in this case were to attempt some sort of lawful screen, the county would be willing to perform a review of the property and lawful structures on the property to determine uh, if storage and screening uh, or screen storage of secondhand materials was permissible. Um, but uh, uh, at this time, it does not appear there is a habitable dwelling on the property, a legally habitable dwelling, I should say so. Hmm. Uh, two point two four acres, sir. Two and a quarter acres. Excuse me. Two and a quarter. Okay. So what the zoning ordinance says is that the outdoor storage shall be located to the rear of the primary structure. Um, I was thinking it was primary residence, but it's primary structure. That makes more sense. Okay. Okay. Okay, Mr. Sento, is there anything else that you want to share with me? Uh, no, sir. I think that concludes um, uh, my testimony. Okay. Well, I will issue a written order, but just to give you an idea of what it's going to be, it's, you know, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and enter a finding of responsibility based on the fact that the property owner did not return the form, um, as well as the evidence indicated by the exhibits. And I'll grant the relief that you requested in the citation, um, but under the zoning ordinance, He'll have 30 days to remedy. If you recall that from the if when they admit responsibility. Yes, sir. Uh, and if that was that that's the moment really three requested anyway. Okay. Um, uh, 30 days to gain compliance and then uh, $250 fine and then $40 per day. Uh, every day violation continues until uh, $1,500 is reached, at which point we will refer the case to the county attorney's office. Okay, let me see here. And I will include that relief request uh, in a follow-up email to you after this hearing. Okay. Because in your citation, let's see. Yeah. In your citation, you say monetary penalties for failure to comply you reference the seven hundred and fifty dollars. I don't see anything else, although I may have missed it. No, that's the uh, what put language in the citation and references five point one four in the zoning ordinance. Um, that's the same language we include. Our relief request is more detailed than that. OK, OK, well, why don't you send me that follow up email and uh, we'll go from there. That sounds good. Thank you. Okay, with that, we will close the hearing and a formal written order will be forthcoming. Thank you, Mr. Brown. We appreciate it. Oh, have a great day. You too, sir. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.